Okay, our speaker is Roger Rucker. His topic, all things wild. A little bit about Roger. <clears throat> uh, he has a master's degree in zoology. He has, Roger has over 13 years experience with raptors and raptor education programs, 10 years in Kansas and three years in Georgetown. Roger is the vice president and education coordinator for all things wild rehabilitation in Georgetown. He also rescues injured raptors for all things wild so they do not injure the people who find them. His favorite raptor is the great horned owl. So Roger, you have it. Okay, all things wild rehabilitation is a nonprofit organization. We exist totally on donations and uh, other means of uh, getting money by grants. Our goal is to take in native wild animals from central Texas that are injured or orphaned and then rehabilitate them if they're injured or raise them if they're babies and let them go back to the wild. Last year, 2020, we took in 2,012 wild animals from 75 different species. Here's a few examples of uh, what we took in. Uh, 431 cottontail rabbits, 165 uh, white-winged doves, 100 and some raccoons, 124 raccoons, 156 fox squirrels, 226 Virginia opossums. Some of the uh, rarer species we took in into uh, Texas tortoises, which is an endangered species. We took in one bobcat, one beaver, two porcupines, uh, three caracaras, crested caracaras, and uh, five green herons. I say green, mentioning green herons because their story is kind of unique. The little green herons will nest in the trees around the town square in Georgetown. So when they start, little herons start fledging and dropping out of the trees, then uh, people pick them up and bring them to us thinking they're injured. When in fact, uh, they're, they're just fledging. So what we do then is give them a pretty good meal and then take them back down to the river and uh, let them go. All things wild, uh, started out as a group of home rehabbers that had permits from the state. And then in, in 2018, we leased two acres from Blue Moon Rescue Ranch, which is about two miles southeast of Gerald, or about six miles from the uh, CA ballroom. We built a 2,400 square foot rehab center along with the uh, outlying pens and cages that are required for state and federal permits to be able to rehabilitate wild animals. And I told you about how many we've taken in. We opened the facility in March of 2019 and we're continuing to take in animals today. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is give you a virtual tour of all things wild.
Wild Rehabilitation. We're a nonprofit organization located on two acres just north of Georgetown, Texas, but work with wildlife all over the greater Austin area. Our mission at All Things Wild is to promote respect and compassion for all wildlife through public education programs, along with rehabilitating sick, injured, orphaned, and displaced wildlife, then safely releasing them back into the appropriate habitat. With the growth of Austin and its surrounding communities, each year we have seen an exponential increase in the number of animals needing rehabilitation. In 2020 alone, we took in approximately 2,000 animals, representing over 60 different species. We're excited to give you a virtual tour of our facilities so you can get a behind the scenes look at everything we do. So what happens when someone finds an animal that they believe needs assistance? Well, the first thing we recommend is to just give us a call. Before we take in an animal, we like to find out more about the situation and assess if it's appropriate and safe to remove the animal. Once we believe the animal is in need of assistance and safe to handle, we'll ask the rescuer to contain the animal and bring it to our facility. If an animal is considered unsafe, we may direct the rescuer to the game warden, animal control, or a local wildlife rehabilitator who can assist. When you arrive at the gate, you may be greeted by our friendly pack of welcome donkeys. All Things Wild shares property with an equestrian rescue, and the donkeys are always looking for a delicious carrot. When driving in or out, please make sure that you wait for the gates to close completely to ensure the donkeys don't wander out. Inside, you'll be greeted by someone from All Things Wild and asked to fill out an intake form. We want to get as much information as we can to ensure proper care for the animal. And this includes knowing where it came from so we can release it back to that area and any details about its current state. We are required to report all of the animals we take in to Texas Parks and Wildlife. We greatly appreciate any financial support a rescuer can provide as sometimes rehabilitation of an animal can take up to three months or more to be ready for release. While you're filling out the intake form, our staff will rush the animal into our medical area for a thorough examination. Our wildlife veterinary technician will look for injuries or abnormalities and make a note of anything that needs to be addressed and decide what treatment is right for the situation. Our medical area is equipped with a full x-ray suite with anesthesia, allowing us to check for issues that may not be fully noticeable on the surface, such as a broken wing or obstruction. We thought this little raccoon had a broken toe, but x-ray images show that there were no broken bones. Good news for this little one. The medical area gives animals a place to adjust to the center and be isolated from the other animals while being treated. Once they are healing nicely, they'll be moved to the general population area and paired with other animals of the same species if possible. If the animal is deemed healthy but too young to survive in the wild, it will be taken to the nursery for fluids and warmth. Our nursery is one of the busiest places in the center. During springtime, we can receive hundreds of orphaned newborns in need of care. We start by weighing the animal. This tells us how much to feed it. Because all orphans arrive in rehabilitation dehydrated, the next step is to give the baby fluids. The baby will then start on a feeding regimen, often around the clock. Each species has a milk replacement formula purchased by All Things Wild from a company that specializes in animal nutrition. Baby songbirds require a whole different level of extra care than a mammal. These avian youngsters require feeding every 30 minutes. All Things Wild is equipped with several incubators so we can keep the temperature and humidity just right for this critical time of life as a young animal is unable to produce warmth. We try to ensure that all of the animals getting rehabilitated are receiving the best nutrients in order to heal and be released. This might be preparing a fresh green salad for squirrels, kibble for a skunk, or something a bit meatier for the raptors. Our kitchen and prep area is always busy with a meal, a snack, or a bottle being prepared for a hungry critter. 
and all that food means a steady line of dishes to be cleaned and sanitized for the next use. Cleanliness and sanitation are a must when dealing with rehabilitating wildlife. You are never certain what an animal may have gotten into or contracted out in the wild, so it's always best to take extra precautions. During baby season, our laundry facilities are running all day, providing clean towels, blankets, and hammocks for the animals. We go through hundreds of gallons of laundry soap and bleach during our busy season. None of this would be possible without the staff and volunteers. It's an all day, dirty, and sometimes heart-wrenching job, and it's nice to take a break and recoup some energy. In the center, we have a staff kitchen and lounge area complete with refrigerator, water cooler, snacks, and a full shower to keep everyone going strong through the day. We also have a growing library of wildlife books to learn more about the animals in our care. Our outdoor enclosures provide a place for growing animals to become accustomed to being outside before release and also give our educational animals some more enjoyed sunshine and exercise. This building is for our education raptors that are being trained to assist in education programs. These raptors are unreleasable due to injuries or other factors that prevent them from surviving on their own. Because they'll spend their lives in captivity, we want to give them a special place to live. Our raptor enclosure is for injured raptors to have a place to fly and get sunshine while they're healing. The enclosure has plenty of spaces to meet the needs of each individual bird, and as the bird gains more of its abilities back, it can graduate to a larger enclosure with more space. Once it's in the largest enclosure and has flown for a period of time, it will be released back into the wild, preferably in the area where it was originally found. Along with the raptors, we have two enclosures for small birds, one for doves and pigeons, and the other for songbirds. Here in the enclosure, feathered babies learn to fly and to feed themselves before being released to the wild. Our possum enclosures provide a nest box and some climbing branches for the young joeys to stretch their legs on. Possums are nocturnal creatures, so you won't usually see them hanging around during the day. They prefer to spend that time napping and instead wake up and have a bite to eat in the evening. As adorable as they are, raccoons are inquisitive, busy creatures who love to dip toys in the water and make a huge mess. We try to keep those hands busy by providing lots of entertainment choices. Everything from swimming pools and rope ladders to softballs and even an old pair of jeans. Once they're grown enough to move to our outdoor enclosures, cleaning becomes a difficult and time-consuming undertaking. One of our largest enclosures is our orphan fawn pen. This secure pen is an open and private area for fawns to graze and grow together until they're big enough for release with minimal interaction from humans. A typical fawn requires six months of care before it can be released and survive on its own, which ends up costing a small fortune in fresh vegetables and kibble made especially for the deer. Our skunk enclosure, known as Stinky Town, is made extra deep compared to other enclosures. Skunks are diggers. Their feet are like little shovels and they often make a burrow in which they spend their days because they're also nocturnal. In the evening, they'll eat any insect that ventures into their enclosure and as a special fun fact, skunks love scrambled eggs and cottage cheese. Thank you for coming with us on this virtual tour of our rehabilitation center. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Wildlife is all around us. We hope you've been inspired to find a way to help these amazing animals in any way you can. Whether by volunteering or supporting your local wildlife rehabilitation center, or by just being mindful of the animals that cross your path every day and keeping them safe from cars or pets. Thanks again and see you next time. I have one more video to show you.
get it in. Roger, it looks like it may say Al up in the very middle top. Yeah, I can't. For some reason, can't get that online. That's where it is. Hmm. I think I can bring it up if you need me to. <laughs> yeah, if you would, please. Okay, let's see what I can do. That was a great video. Was that, yeah, it that seemed like great. it was professionally done. Was that professionally done, Roger? I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, we have a volunteer who's a professional. Uh, there we go. Oh, yay. Is that, um, uh oh, uh oh, where did it go? I lost it. No, it's there right it there. Is. Just click on the. Oh, just star. bear with me here a moment. I'm going to make it bigger. It's big. Is it big enough? Uh, yeah, it's quite yeah. big. Okay. okay. Just need to start it here. Mm -hmm. There we there go. You go. Hi, I'm Roger with All Things Wild. This is Ginger. She's a red morph eastern screech owl. She weighs all of five ounces. She's our ambassador screech owl because she has a permanent wing injury. Not only is this an education bird, she's also a surrogate parent. This spring, she was the parent to seven baby orphan screech owls and she raised all of them up and we released all of them back to the wild. The reason it's important to have a surrogate parent for the orphan babies that come in is because raptors between the age of three weeks and 13 weeks imprint on their parents and their siblings as to what they are. If humans take care of them, they will imprint on humans and they can't be released because they don't know what they are and they're not afraid of humans. In fact, they're liable to attack humans. So by using her as a surrogate parent, we were able to raise those and they imprinted on her. In fact, one time when she had five orphan babies she was feeding, we sometimes had to pull her out and let her rest for a day because she wasn't eating. She was giving all of her food to the babies. You will notice she has these little feather tufts here. These are not ears. These are called ear tufts. They're just feathers. And uh, she can control those to raise them up or down. When she wants to uh, get really skinny beside the tree trunk or a branch, she raises those up and she gets really skinny and so she really blends in with the branch. You will notice how far she can turn her head around. See, she's facing this way. She can turn her head almost all the way around and do a little bill clapping for me because she doesn't like me messing with her. They have 14 bones in their neck where we have seven. So they can turn their head 270 degrees without moving their body. And that gives them an advantage because their eyes are fixed in their head. They primarily use their ears to hunt with. They can hear 10 times better than we can with their ears. So they'll find their prey with their ears and with their better eyesight, then they can see it and dive on. Now their ears are right here on the side of their head by the eye. And eat. all owls have what's called a facial disc. 
beak is flat against the face, and then the feathers are tapered around the face to direct the sound over here toward the ears. Uh, she can't fly very fast, but see it. there along the edge of her wings are fluffy feathers. All owls have these, and what happens is that these quick feathers will break up the air as it flows over the wing so they don't make any noise when they fly. They are completely silent. Uh, screech owls come in three different colors. About 75% of them are gray, about 10% are the red, and then there's also about 10% that are a brown color. They're found in uh, open terrain because they usually have about 200 acres as their territory. And the, in the daytime, they'll go into the nesting box and hide, or they'll hide up against uh, a tree branch so that they blend in. You can see how well camouflaged she is. Eastern screech owls are cavity nesters. They nest in hollows and trees or all things wild sells nesting boxes that you can put up and try to get one to uh, take over the box and nest in it. Although mine has squirrels in it. They uh, sometimes pick up a little snake that's about the size of an earthworm called a Texas blind snake. They pick this snake up and they put it in their nesting box and this snake eats all of the parasites. They live three to five years in the wild and in captivity they can live up to 10 years. They eat large insects, small rodents, uh, reptiles, and uh, just about anything else that they can catch. But uh, her, we feed her one mouse a day, and uh, we weigh her about every two weeks to make sure she hasn't getting too fat because she doesn't get a lot of exercise with that bad wing. So if she starts gaining weight, then we cut her back to a half a mouse a day until she gets back down the right weight. These poor guys are the second most common bird hit by cars because they like to hunt from perches. And so they'll be sitting on a perch and a car comes along and the headlights from the car will attract large insects. And the owls will dive down to hit the insects and the car hits them. And that's probably what happened to her is originally she got hit by a car and broke that wing and it didn't heal right. Uh, screech owls probably run about 50 to 75 dollars each to be a bell tan. The babies cost a little bit more because we have to provide food for them from the time we get them till the time we release them. And that takes about 14, 15 weeks. Most of them will come in with, if they were hit by a car, they have a wing injury that's broken or sprained and a head injury. If they have a head injury, they forget how to eat and uh, sometimes they can't even see. So we have to force feed them. Once they uh, eat on their own again and they can uh, take whatever wing wraps we put on them for, for their wing to heal, then we put them out in a larger pen so that they can uh, get used to flying again. We like to put them into For some reason, we've lost the sound. I'm wondering, yeah. Betty, did you turn the sound down? The little lizards that we have here in Central Texas. Is it okay now? It's back.
Okay, before I take questions, uh, if you want to see any more of the videos we've made about the animals at All Things Wild, you can go to YouTube and type in All Things Wild Rehabilitation, and we have about six or seven more videos there you can uh, watch of the wild animals. Okay, any questions? Well, you know people have questions. I think one person wanted to know, how do you feed them half a mouse? I have a pretty good idea, but. <laughs> well, uh, we buy frozen mice and rats. And uh, so we thaw one out and we just cut it in half. Well, hmm. that, that makes sense. Knife, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this person probably wouldn't want to volunteer for that job. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you said you're looking for volunteers, is that correct? Yes, uh, starting the 1st of April. And we can, last year we had a problem. We couldn't take on a lot of volunteers because of the pandemic. So we ended up, a lot of the babies we got in, we had to farm them back out to uh, home rehabbers. So this year we're gonna try to avoid that. And uh, so we're asking for volunteers to come forward again to help us. We can. We have, have three hour shifts from eight in the morning till eight at night. So volunteers can choose the shift and we'd like four or five people per shift in order to uh, feed the babies and do all the cleaning that is required. Well, that sounds very interesting. And they just need to contact All Things Wild to get that set up or started, is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, what our about donations? Our first orientation is this Saturday. Oh, okay, okay. So if anybody out there is interested and want to go ahead and contact them soon, you could probably get started right away. And then you could report back and tell us all about it. Um, we want to know about donations. Can you, someone asked, can you take donations online to All Things Wild? Yes. Uh, if you go to the website, allthingswildrehabilitation.org, and then there's a place there you can donate. Great. Do you take in eagles? Uh, we would if we, we really don't have proper size cage for eagles. So if we brought one in, we would, we would have to take it down to another facility in South Austin that has a larger cage to get a permit for rehabilitating eagles and ospreys, you need a, a large cage, which is uh, 20 feet wide, 100 feet long and 16 feet tall. And the one we have is only 50 feet long, so we can do everything up to eagles or ospreys. But we haven't received any of those in. Do you, um, how do you end up feeding? You mentioned that you have some little baby things that have to be fed every 30 minutes. How do you do that when after 8 p.m.? Uh, well, in the wild, they're only, you know, as soon as it's dark, then the mama's birds stop feeding them. Oh. So we're, we're just acting like mama birds and we feed them during the daylight hours. Oh, okay. I thought you needed volunteers all during the night. I thought that might be hard. No. What about blankets? Um, I work for a, a volunteer organization that gets lots of towels and blankets that we can't really sell. Would this be something you'd want? Uh, we've got plenty of blankets. Um, you'd have to ask about the towels because we go through a lot of towels. Right now we've got plenty, but okay. uh, as the season goes along, we'll probably wear those out and we'll, we'll need more. Good to know. Good what to we know. really need is laundry soap and and disinfectant like bleach. Okay. Everyone, do, do y'all have any more questions you'd like to ask? I know somebody asked if we were gonna have um, candy tough at the uh, horticulture plant sale on Saturday and not that I know of. So I think most of y'all heard it mentioned that we're got, we are gonna have that plant sale nine to 12 at the horticulture center. But not that I know of as far as that. So any more questions for Roger, because this has been fantastic. And of course, we can all go on to YouTube and just type in, what was it again, Roger? All things wild rehabilitation. Okay. And also, um, Steve mentioned that if you'd like to get a snake, uh, a little uh, 
profile of all the snakes that we have here. His address is 115 Whippoorwill, and you can pick one up. He's going to have them out on his front porch. And let's see if we have any more questions. I think that's it. So it sounds like we're back to Bill now. Thank you very, very much, Roger. Yeah, you're welcome.